Okay, so here we are, part two of section 2.7. There's quite a bit in this, so I broke it up into a couple different chunks here. Uh, this particular slide, I just wanted to give you a few examples. We've talked about integers, we've talked about floats, and so we have examples here of, of ints and floats. If you use two ints in an expression, so you have something that you're writing out like this, uh, the result is going to be an int. Same thing with the float. If you have two floats, the result is a float, so just like this, so 4.2 times 4.2, uh, there we go. I guess I could have mixed this up and used different numbers. I just realized these the same numbers on for both of those, but anyway, uh, so, we, so we've got that in there. So there's a float there. Now, if you get to a mixed type expression where you have an int and a float, the int is temporarily converted while it's doing this, and the result is a float. That's the most important part, okay? So, so if you take 4 times 3.6, you will get 14.4. So it does give you a float answer, which is very important, okay? If, for example, you come down here, though, on this one, and you're like, oh, uh, somehow I'm using something that converts a float to an int, it will truncate it. So this is what happens. You see something like this, and you have 4 times 3.6, all right? It's going to cut off the 0.6, and the computer is going to see 4 times 3, which equals 12. Okay, so you have to be a little bit careful uh, with that. I would say this doesn't come up too much, but just if you're like, man, what happened to my, you know, decimal places here? I, I thought I was going to get these. Well, con consider that this might have happened to you. Okay, so that's just very quickly, um, uh, just like I said, just brief look into, into this piece. Okay, the last little bit of section 2.7. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. Uh, I'm going to give you some code, and then at the very end, we'll actually look at it in the compiler or in, in the Python uh, um, Tutor IDE. So we've got breaking long statements into multiple lines. It becomes really annoying if you have one line that goes all the way across, and uh, you know you can break up that statement and drop it down to two or three or however many lines you need, because otherwise you have to scroll around and it gets really ugly, all right? So we have this nice little uh, backslash character right here, and they, they refer to it as a multi-line continuation character. It's just a backslash. Uh, allows you to break things up into multiple lines, okay? And there's a few little rules about doing this, and so I'm, I have quite a few little examples here over the next three slides. So uh, you can see in this one, result equals, and we have all these little things in here. And then when I get to plus right here, you can see the backslash, and then boom, I'm rolling down to this next section. Okay. Uh, now, there. Are, let me give you a few other examples. But um, I will say that a lot of the IDEs are smart enough to figure this out. But just, uh, just you may want this as an option. I'll show you live in, in uh, Python Tutor in a second. Uh, let's say that we have something in parentheses. So we have this in parentheses. We have a print statement. Boom. Open right here. Notice my close is all the way down here. Okay. So we have. Um, the, you know, the string right here, you know, and a comma, and here's a variable name. Looks weird seeing Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday not capitalized, but remember, never start with a capital letter and a variable name, so so this is correct. That's totally fine. Uh, in the sentence, you notice in the in the string, look, they're capitalizing here, of course, but, uh, but anyway, the, these are variable names. That's why it looks funny like that. Uh, so anyway, so we have this piece in here. We are saying, okay, we want to do this, blah, blah, blah. We put it in parentheses, so the interpreter knows that we're going down to the next line and we're still continuing until we close that. Okay, so this is totally fine. And if you're going down to the next line, most likely you're doing some type of complex piece where you've got, you know, functions and you're, and you're doing some kind of, whether it's a built-in or whatever, and you're using parentheses, okay? So another option down here, we have, uh, you know, some different things that are added up. Again, they're in parentheses. This one, you can see it uses the plus here. I'll show you an example of that live in the code in a second. Um, and in fact, I'll show you on the next slide uh, one where you can, you know, we're not using it anyway, not using those pluses. Um, so let's take this out. Let's check this little thing out. All right. So we have on this slide, we have an example of this. So here's a print statement. We have this piece right here. Our string, uh, notice back on this slide here, so I forgot to say this, uh, an exception to this when you're putting a parenthesis in, you can go ahead and do this, not use the little line character. Uh, line continuation character of the backslash um, except for when you're breaking a string into two lines so over here on this slide I have this sentence right here so I print and then I have this little sentence on a scale of 1 to 10 blah 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 blah. I come over here notice how I just boom carriage return down and have ever I didn't put a slash here this will give us an error okay so it's got that to correct it really really simple put a backslash uh, right there and it will work and i'll show you this in just a minute here's another example you can use pluses for this one 
but for this one you could actually get away with not using them so um and, and you'll see that so if you go to this link it looks like this okay so you could see and this this is pretty wide too but uh you can imagine doing this on a laptop or a smaller screen it gets really annoying if you have to scroll back and forth with your code um I hate it. drives me nuts. I try and get everything into, you know, the window that I'm going to use and, uh, you know, size things accordingly. All right. So, and I use an, an ultrawide monitor at home and at work. So I have a lot of space, but it still annoys me if I have to scroll across or if it's really, really long. All right. So it's harder to follow your code. And if you have to scroll back and forth, it's just a pain. So trust me on this one. You'll, you'll find out. All right. Now this is correct. This is totally fine because we have a single, single line with this statement and it works perfectly. All right. Also correct, we're doing this piece right here. We've got this little backslash character right here. If I was to try this up here, and let's say I was like, oh, after the comment, it should totally work, right? And I hit enter. Your first clue that something is up is that Python Tutor changed the color and we're back to black. So that should give you a nice little hint like, whoa, something's a little bit messed up there. But if I come up here, throw in a little backslash, changes back, and we're good to go. Okay, I'm gonna leave this in just so you can see it work on there. And then this is just the that other example where you, there were pluses right here, but it, it will work without it because we're in parentheses and we uh, are separate these up. We could do it anywhere we wanted here, but uh, we're gonna I'm gonna do it without just so you can see it work. Okay, so if I go to visualize, you'll see my first one. Boom, there it goes again. Drives me nuts. Um, so you can do whatever you want here. If I drag this across. I'm completely off the screen now. So I just went two inches off the screen over here. Uh, so that, that kind of thing drives me nuts. Uh, so, and it will you, you too, trust me when you're, when you, if you had a hundred lines of code in here and you're trying to go back and forth and figure things out, uh, and you have to scroll back and forth, super, super pain. All right. Uh, this one right here, here we go with next. It's going to look at each one of these lines and the, this for Python tutor, it waits and then it puts it in. Okay. So here we go. Again, super annoying. We're going all the way across. All right. So, uh, and this last one, same kind of thing. It's going to go down here and set those all up and boom. Look at that. All those are the same. All right. So I just wanted to mention this. This is something that you'll play with. You'll get the hang of this. So uh, as, you're, as you're putting your code together, it, you'll see as you get to uh, all sorts of, we're going to do all sorts of things. And sometimes your statements are long. They need to go down to multiple lines. So like this one is on three. Um, you know, this was two, but you'll, like I said, you'll get the hang of it. All right. So, um, that's it for, for, uh, section 2.7.